Hello Sky, uh, in this video we will continue with the uh, topic about interval estimation and um, we already know that we have worked with the data sets of the EAI from the last week and we already just measured for the mean or the average values of the population and also the standard deviation and other kinds of criteria of the topic uh, and the today section we're going to just demonstrate for you guys how to find the interval estimation of the average of the um, uh, some kinds of variable of course this could be the quantitative variable um, according to the different situation so first of all I will just copy for the sample of the 30 managers that we already created uh, before and uh, we have already measured for uh, the population too right the population of the uh, this one and uh, the standard deviation of the population too um, so uh, all the thing I'm going to do will be try to answer for the question about uh, the interval estimates of the average annual salaries of all the managers uh, in the confident level of the 95% uh, why we already know that the population standard deviation is 3999.2 according to the historical data and actually this is the data that I taken from the population um, so what are you gonna do to fight for the interval estimation uh, uh, according to this and uh, we we go and do it so uh, this question will be think about this one will be learning about interval estimate okay and uh, uh, interval estimate and we have to just determine about what remember about the interval estimate okay um, to do that we will have to measure for the upper limit okay and the lower limit so what will be the function of the upper limit that could be the mean values of course the mean as uh, of the of the mean values of the sample okay plus for the matching of year okay and the lower limit will equal to the mean of the sample minus for the margin of ear okay now how can we do it um, even in case like it's not that hard to measure for that we have to clarify about the uh, first of all the mean of the sample and the mean of the sample is quite easy to measure with the average function right uh, but the marginal error that should be another story uh, so first of all we will try to just collect all the information about uh, this one and uh, the mean of the uh, sample okay of the sample we equal to I would just make it very quick uh, average and we have the average of the sample itself it should be 30 observation right so uh, something like about uh, 52,567 and this is the mean of the sample uh, now let's just need the other sample to do that so according to what they already provide of course as they provide the population standard deviation so this is standard deviation of the population you know of the population and this is the point that we must be very very careful about uh, this question so they provide could be 3999.2 okay and uh, this could be the the standard deviation come from the population uh, and we use this so this could be the k that we none the population std that means standard deviation okay this could be the clarify about what ties up the function we would do and uh, we go the further with the so this one we will deal with that for the normal distribution if you still remember and uh, we will use another function to do that will be um, the norm confident dot confident okay that's could be calculate for the confident um, 
standard um, marginal of errors from the normal distribution and uh, to do that we will have to check it for uh, and later by this way we can measure for the marginal okay the marginal margin of error okay according to the uh, norm jar confident oh sorry that should be the confident dot norm confident dot norm okay the confident dot norm and we, if we open that they require for the answer uh, that's mean the uh, the, the, the level of significant the standard deviation of the population and also the size of the sample okay so this will be all the three functions we're gonna do uh, we need the answer remember we need the standard deviation and we need the size so how can we do it so we, we can slowly and firmly we have already the standard population the standard of the uh, uh, devi deviation of the population is already here uh, another one does mean we need the sample size right the sample size here that's quite easy 30 okay we, we already got it like 30 okay and the last one okay the last one will be what the last one will be uh, there we need the answer so they already asked for the confident level so confident level that means the percentage up uh, we're pretty sure that we will be correct will be 95 percent and that means we can easily measure for the um, level of significant okay uh, that should be answer. Okay, that should be answer. That means the possibility that we make the error. Okay, and now that should be a hundred percent minus four, ninety-five percent, and that should be five percent. Okay, and this will be the time for us to conduct for the measurement of error. Uh, I will just put it here and I do it like over here. Okay, and I use the confident dark norm. Okay. And we start with the answer 5% standard deviation of the population we already know. And the last one will be the size, the 30. Okay. And this will be the imaginary years. And we can now do it with the upper limit. That's equal to the mean of the sample blood for the imaginary years. That will be uh, 53,998 or something like that. And the lower limit could be the mean of the sample minus four, the marginal of error. Oh, I'm sorry, I make some yeah the error. Okay, so we can say over here, uh, that mean the confident interval. Oh, sorry, the 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 interval, uh, confident interval. Let's estimate confident interval. Uh, estimate uh, in, uh estimation. Uh, of the average annual salary with the confident level of 95 percent a what 51 to 53 nine hundred ninety eight dollar okay that should be the point and this will be the case in which we have a non the population standard deviation so we continue with another example and uh, in this way case we we had the same answer we had the same question and we had the same data the only thing that I'm going to say that will be different will be that they require for the calculation of the interval estimate but they didn't provide any information about the standard deviation of the population uh, okay and uh, that should be the case here and uh, let's check it and let's do it so over here we don't know about the standard deviation of the population and in this case we can just only measure for the standard deviation of the sample only okay and uh, we do the same we do the same so uh, we can still also do the 
average estimation of the standard deviation okay in actually in this way we also calculate for the standard deviation of the sample um, so we use the stdev dot what dot what dot s right because uh, this will be sample okay uh, standard deviation of the sample okay now that should be this much and the sample size, uh, the same, we have the 30, right? The confidence level, 95%. And of course, that mean we can generate for the calculation of the level of significance. And they the quite the same, that should be 5%. Okay, the only thing that we have to remind would be uh, this one we don't know about the standard deviation of the population so that means use the standard deviation of the sample instead and that means we have to follow the um, T's that means student distribution okay okay follow the student distribution uh, remember about this one is this not the norm this uh, that should be the confident dot norm okay and of course like this way we will use the another function that means uh, the confident dot t function to measure for uh, the um, measure errors okay measure error okay let's do it Engineer error okay now how can we go on and do it um, so it's the same philosophy we apply for that and we use the confident job T's and open parenthesis we have the 5% of the answer we have the standard deviation and now this will be the standard deviation of the sample okay and the size will be 30 percent uh, 30 of the observation and this will be the measure errors and the same way we apply for the mean of the sample plus for the measure error to get the upper limits of the interval estimation and also we do it with the mean minus for the measure of errors so we have the lower limit and we make the conclusion like this way okay mm -hmm. 551 uh, 267 and 53 867 okay that should be the point all right however actually uh, we can do the cheating I I'm not doing the cheating but like we can use another way to do it with the uh, in the case we don't know about the standard deviation of the population but just have the information about standard deviation of the sample we don't have to use the confident doctors and all the calculation like this we just need to use the data analysis tool okay and we can easily measure for everything by this way okay okay now just just be how to do it okay let's go on to go to select for the data data analysis and we do it for uh, remember about our descriptive statistic and we select for the data of the annual salary annual salary will be good okay because uh, this will be our interest attribution that we really want to do uh, I select for the output grant will be here uh, to say the time and remember to click on the summarize statistic and the confident level of the mean so in the previous section about the um, confident interval I'm uh, sorry about the descriptive statistic in the chapter 3 you use the box up the summarized statistic only but for this one you also use the confident level of mean this will help us to generate for their um, margin of error for the level of the confident level of 95 percent in this case that's 95 percent if we increase for that this we change a little bit but we just go over this way okay now let's do it okay and we see over here man you see over here First of all, we had the mean value. They told
totally the same to what we already estimated and another one the confident level of the 95 percent uh, this will be the margin of error that's not 1299.96 okay so we do the same and we measure for the mean plus for the confident level to get the upper limit and the mean minus for the confident level for the lower limit we can do it the same way and uh, generate for the same result but in case like we really want to do it with another confident level of maybe up to 99 percent and uh, I will try to generate for another result over here maybe okay and let's go and check it so this will be the result this will be the result for uh, this still have the same mean right of course because the mean value they they will generate the same uh, methods of measurement but however the confident level now they're different to the previous one so it looked like with the larger confident with the higher level of the confident we have the larger um, margin of errors and of course for the upper limit and the lower limit now that is a little bit different okay this does will be a little bit different okay and they will be look like a little bit broader than the previous one with the smaller confident level and you your task will be uh investigate why it okay thank you a lot